So far, we've let users browse the menu, add items to an order, then see their total order. What we haven't done is create a mechanism to confirm that order, so that's our next job. While this won't actually send anything off to a server somewhere, I do at least want to use this chance to show off one of SwiftUI's most impressive features, forms. Forms are containers like lists, but they're designed for user input like setting screens, anywhere the user might want to make several choices in one place. Forms do a few interesting things as you'll see, and along the way, I was showing you how to use common UI controls like pickers, text fields, and more. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely text fields are easy. Well, they aren't hard, but they also don't work like you're used to in UIKit. To get things up and running, let's create a new checkout view struct that will present when place order is pressed. I'll press Command N to add a new Swift UI view. I'll call this thing our checkout view. Then let's hide this left-hand screen, make some more space. Like that, boom. I'll start by giving this the same object from the environment we had before. So in our checkout view here, I'll say at environment object, var order is an order, like that. Again, make sure to provide the same thing in the preview down here, otherwise your preview will crash. I'll say static let order is an order, and then check out view dot environment object, our order, like that. That's the easy stuff out of the way. So let's try something new. Let's show a picker with various payment options, allowing users to choose cash, credit card, or iDine points. This requires two new properties. First, we need a property that lists all possible values we want to show in our picker. So in our checkout view here, I'll say static let payment types be an array of cash, then credit card, and then iDine points, like that. All possible ways of paying. Second, we need a property where SwiftUI can store the value that's selected in the picker. You see, when our UI changes, SwiftUI wants to know about it so we can update our view. Maybe some views that were hidden are now shown, for example. Rather than asking us to watch changes by hand, we instead bind our picker to a property on our struct so that when the picker changes, SwiftUI automatically changes the property as well. And just like environment objects, this will cause SwiftUI to re-invoke our body property so any changes are visible. We already used at environment object for working with data that comes from an external source. Here though, this data is just from our view and will be a simple value rather than a dedicated class that conforms to observable object. SwiftUI gives us a different property wrapper for these simple local values, at state. It works similarly to at environment object in that if the object changes, it automatically refreshes the UI. But it's designed for simple local values like integers and strings. If you want to use classes like order, you need to use something else instead. Now this really matters, so I'll say it again. If you want to use simple values that are used only by the current view, you should use at state for your property wrapper. Apple also recommends you mark those properties as private to reiterate they aren't designed for external access. So I'm going to add a property now using at state. We'll say at state private var payment type equals zero, which in our case will be cash by default. Now let's fill in the body property with a picker. This is all new, so let's go ahead and do the code and then break it down. I'll replace the text with a vstack, then a section, then a picker with a prompt, how do you want to pay? And a selection, I'll say dollar payment type. Inside there, I'll write for each zero up to less than self dot payment types dot count. Text self dot payment types dollar zero like that. And then at the end of our vstack, I'll say we have a navigation bar title of text, payment, display mode is going to be dot in line like that. Let's break that down. We have a vertical stack containing exactly one section. 
That section contains a picker, which uses dollar payment type for its selection. It has a label, how do you want to pay, that may or may not be visible, but that will change in a moment. Inside the picker, we have a for each block looping over all payment types and adding each one as an option to our picker. And the screen has a title payment in small text rather than a title. So hopefully on the right here, we should see a layout working nicely. Great, there we go, our iOS spinning wheel with how do you want to pay? Of course, the real question here is why do we say dollar payment type rather than just payment type? 